My mother seemed to notice that I was not entirely convinced. I guess her mother now discovered she found out uh, from the facial expression of the author that she was not convinced, she was not satisfied with the kind of uh, logic, the kind of answers she provided her. She looked at me reprovingly and after that we spoke no more about it and after that she looked at the author uh, reprovingly in a manner that she was scolding her or she was uh, unhappy with her, with the author uh, since she was raising questions about the intention of that lady. So uh, she was unhappy about it and then after that uh, they spoke no more about uh, that particular thing. Meanwhile, I had arrived at the station without having paid much attention to the things on the way. Now, she was just thinking, she went to the past and was just recollecting those memories. Uh, so now, she reached. She reached station without having that is uh, while she was walking towards the station she did not pay much attention to uh, the things on the way uh, the things on the way means uh, the things on both sides of the uh, road uh, because uh, those were the familiar things so Cherise without having much paying attention to the things on the way I was walking in familiar places again for the first time since the war since everything there was familiar to her, she had uh, lived there in the past, so uh, the old memories related to that was still, a fr was still fresh in her mind uh, and, and uh, she was just walking. The familiar uh, road, the familiar uh, place once again after the war got over. But I did not want to go further uh, than was necessary. Those were the familiar sights and she didn't want to uh, pay much attention to those things because that would revive unpleasant memories of her past. I didn't want to upset myself with the sight of streets and houses full of memories from a Precious time. So that is say, said the same thing. That is, uh, she did not want to upset her, uh, make her unhappy with the uh, sights, or with the uh, memories of the from the past, and thus becoming upset. So she did not pay much attention. She did not look at the things on both sides of the road. She just went straight up to the station uh, and bother not to look at the things about. In the train, back I saw Mrs. Dorling in front of me again as I had the first time I met her. So here uh, in the train, when she was traveling, she got onto the train and there she found Mrs. Darling in the same compartment and she found her the same way uh, as she f met her the first time in her in her life. The way she met her during the first meeting with her, the same way she appeared in the, uh, in the, uh, in the train uh, on the same compartment. Okay, then. It was the morning after the day my mother had told me about her and this first meeting was the day after after it was the say the morning it was actually she came uh, there at morning so uh, it was the morning after the day mother had said about Mrs. Dorling and that is she reached home uh, during the first half of the war 
she reached home uh, and then mother since she got aware of the consciousness of the things missing in the room uh, in different rooms other rooms also in the house or in the house in particular uh, so uh, when she asked mother mother informed about mrs darling so that was the first time mother spoke about that lady and the next day only the lady appeared there mrs darling came to their house so that was the first meeting now now let's see uh, so that day she had appeared there i had got up late and coming downstairs i saw my mother about to see someone out okay so that day the next morning she got up late and she was uh, then uh, coming downstairs when she saw her mother seeing someone out of the door a woman with a broad bag that lady that mother was with was having a broad bag because uh, their back was towards the author uh, so she could see the back and it was a broad bag what she noticed was a broad bag oh uh, there is my daughter said my mother uh, she beckoned to me uh, the women nodded and picked up the suitcase under uh, the coat track okay so as uh, she came up there and she might have said good morning to her and then uh, mother introduced her to uh, the daughter and as she looked at her uh, as she looked at uh, the daughter that is the author she beckoned that is she just noted um, noted that is suggesting that uh, saying okay and that way she just noted she uh, gave a shake to her head she moved her head in that way uh, uh, affirmatively and then she picked up the suitcase that was placed under the coat rack she wore a brown coat and a shapeless hat she wore a brown coat and a shapeless hat that was her appearance eh? does she live far away i asked seeing the difficulty she had going out of the house with a heavy case okay so the author asked uh, mother her mother if she lived far away from there from the house uh, because uh, she was having difficulty carrying those things carrying that heavy case the suitcase was quite heavy and she was having trouble carrying that so uh, she instinctively asked if she lived far away from there in Marconi Street said my mother uh, number 46 remember that then mother answered she lived in Marconi Street and house number 46 and she also uh, asked her to remember this address I had remembered it that is the author committed it stuck it to her mind and that's why uh, it was well preserved but I had waited a long time to go there but she took really a lot of time she took a lot of time to decide before she could finally go there and uh, finally she decided to get back her family belongings initially after the liberation I was absolutely not interested in all those all that stored stuff and naturally I was also rather afraid of it uh, in the initial period uh, say initial days of the liberation when the country got liberated uh, then she was not interested in all those stored stuff those things all those things which were uh, stuffed either in boxes or suitcases or kept in size uh, kept somewhere in the store uh, this and that so she was not interested in all those stored things and uh, the next point is that she was also afraid of it afraid why because she 
apprehended. She thought that、uh, if she brought back those things, those would provoke her old memories, the memories of her family, the memories of、uh, the past life, and so she was afraid of,、uh, afraid of、uh, the things. Afraid of being confronted with things that had belonged to a connection that、uh, no longer existed, as I've said already,、uh, she was scared. She was afraid、uh, that if she brought back those things, that would those would、uh, revive her old memories, memories of the past, memories of her mother, and、uh, since the mother was gone, mother was dead. Uh, so uh, she did not want that the memories of her mother、uh, should now return and disturb her,、uh, make her mentally upset. Okay, that longer, which were hidden away in the cupboards and boxes, and waiting in vain until they were put back in their place again, which had. Endured all those years because they were things. Okay, so now she says that、uh, those were since、uh, she previously mentioned that she was not interested in those stored stuffs because、uh, they were hidden away in the cupboards. They were put in the cupboards in boxes, and also say they were waiting. They were waiting in vain. Unsuccessfully, uselessly waiting until they were put back in their place again, because she had lost. Most probably, she had lost her、uh, everything. Her house, her mother was、uh, dead. House was also lost. Maybe lost to the war, the that war. So、uh, it was、uh, impossible to. Uh, put them back to their、uh, places, their、uh, their say fixed places, to their particular places.、Uh, that was impossible, and uh, and uh, that's why she was also not interested. Because of this, also she was not much interested in getting them back,、uh, which had endured all those years because they were、uh, things, and they endured、uh, such a long time, such long period. Uh, staying under, say, staying under some confined area that is staying inside boxes, cupboards,、uh, or some other places, and they still maintain their same feature, their same,、uh, their existence、uh, remained the same way, not affected because they were things. They were simply things. And not human beings, because、uh, chaining human beings or keeping human beings in that way inside the boxes for a long time、uh, would not remain the same way. Human beings would not remain the same way, but they、uh, maintain their、uh, features the same way because there were things. But gradually, everything became more normal again. But things started. Getting normal again, her fear started to go away, started to、uh, fade away,、uh, or say fade out. So、uh, things were getting normal, getting back to normalcy. Bread was getting to be a lighter color.、Uh, there was a bed you could sleep in unthreatened. A room with a view you were more used to glancing at each day. So、uh, all these things are mentioned here as bread was getting、uh, to be lighter color. That is,、uh, things were returning back to normalcy. Earlier, things were quite harsh, quite bad, and they could not lead people. The author and the family. And all could not lead a normal life, but things were returning to normalcy, and that's why it is mentioned that bread was getting to be lighter color. Now it was losing that harshness uh, that 
that particular you can say pitch of the color and it was uh, getting thinner and thinner and uh, so things were getting normal there was a bed uh, you could sleep in unthreatened and also uh, you could sleep in bed unthreatened uh, previously there was always a risk a risk of uh, losing life uh, you were uh, believe you believe that you were taking rest a uh, peacefully taking rest but then uh, say something happens something like a bombing t took place and uh, you lost your life so he, now since the situation had changed uh, there was peace uh, so you could sleep unthreatened without any threat you could sleep peacefully in your bed and you could also open the windows doors and see the uh, views outside which your eyes were familiar with earlier you can open the doors and windows even and one day I noticed I was curious about all the possessions uh, that must still be at that address I wanted to see uh, them touch remember and one day the author found that she was curiously interested she was uh, curious about she was uh, strangely interested about the family possessions the family belongings that she thought must be there at the address she wanted now to touch and feel those things and remember the past after my first visit in vain to Mrs. Dorling's house, I decided to try a second time. Now, coming back to the present situation. So, first visit went in vain, was unsuccessful, bore no fruit. Now, she decided to try it second time. Now a girl of about 15 opened the door to me. I asked if her mother was at home and uh, she went there to that address the second time and this time the door was opened by a girl of about 15 years and author asked her if the mother was at home. No, she said, my mother's doing an errand. No matter, I said, I'll wait for her. She replied that mother was out to do some work, do some errand is a thing that you do for some other uh, person that you, uh, the job or the thing.